Hello guys, welcome. It's on a Sunday, the 9th of January 2022. Hope you guys are having a nice Sunday, a relaxed Sunday, and uh, hope you guys are having a nice time. Obviously, yes, it is Raju from the Woman Agenda live podcast channel, live on YouTube. And we, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. We will give you the social media channels later on. Uh, this is um, this was going to be a special on the Afghanistan women and uh, about them, uh, but then we decided, well, I decided that um, that we're going to make it. It's going to be a series because uh, the rights of Afghanistan women needs to be addressed, needs to be showcased on a regular basis. A one special episode is not going to be enough uh, to address the situation. I keep addressing the situation, and and hopefully. Uh, contribute in something which gets addressed uh, and we don't know what difference it will make if it will make any but it needs to be addressed the situation and that's why it's going to be a series and this is obviously the episode two as you saw on this the thumbnail still uh, we will keep on addressing it every week and keep on telling the situation as it ha as keeps on happening and the key articles keep on happening and we will keep on addressing the situation and this is nothing about any ratings or any agenda this is about the afghanistan women that's all it's about and that's that's the main that's the main concern here uh for me for the channel uh, to address about women and, and afghanistan women obviously is a is a uh, a part of that because it's their rights it's their freedom which is in jeopardy and we need to address it on the woman agenda channel and and what we've seen today and we've seen what's been happening recently is there's been a, a few things which have happened recently now one of them is so afghanistan women call for their rights need to bring up the right information you know regarding that uh which i'm going to do So about Afghanistan rights, women on their rights, basically. We wanted to address um, a few things uh, which have, have been happening. Um, I'm just going to go on to the article in a second, actually. The articles, I've, I've got them here, exactly what's been happening regarding the rights. Uh, but I just wanted to do, just to quickly come back a second uh, because when we're talking about rights, what, what what Taliban said initially when they took over, and 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 you can just take this with a little pinch of salt, because obviously Taliban, whatever they say, they they do not. Um, you can't take anything serious what they say because what they were saying is, oh, we're different to the Taliban which were previously, and we are not going to. Um, uh, we are going to be much uh, um, soft and we're, we're not going to be, uh, you know. So they gave that impression that they would give women their rights. But it was totally the opposite. They, they started banning uh, women from going to schools, colleges, uh, banning their beauty shops, the businesses, women businesses. They, they couldn't work. They couldn't go to uh, be presenters in, the, in, in um, the media channel, new channels. I don't see anything different in what their approach has been. It's been the same. 
Um, now, this one, one of the things which is being maybe it's totally ridiculous, and I, I just can't believe they're doing this. Uh, but, but first of all, let's talk about uh, the Afghanistan uh, calling for their rights, the Afghanistan women. So let's just talk a bit about that, then we will come back onto this. So thousands of women, well, dozens of women protested in Afghanistan recently, in the Afghanistan capital, demanding the rights to education, job, political representation from the Taliban government, courtesy of France24.com. Although public protests are effectively banned by the Afghanistan new hardline rulers, there's no surprise there is already. Authorities gave permission for the march held in beating biting cold after the first snowball fall or winter in Kabul. Food carriers, freedom participants chanted while others held placards demanding women get political ports. Some protesters carry banners echoing Taliban complaints that the international community had frozen billions of dollars in aid and assets. The Taliban had pledged a softer rule compared with the first stint in power, like what I said, but women are still, are still largely excluded from government employment and secondary education. So what exactly are uh, you know, is soft about the rule. I, I just don't get it myself. And I'm sure most, most of you don't as well. Despite being permitted to protest, participants said they remain in fear of the continued rulers. And one intersection Taliban fighters cocked and raised their weapons, but the march was allowed to continue. Fear is always there, but we cannot live in fear. We have to fight against our fear, said the 28-year-old Shahira Kohistan. So this has been reported yesterday by the Independent. And uh, what's going on? The Independent, by the website of the UK as well, has said the thousand women who have formerly worked as national security agents. The national security agents we know how primary and how important role that is. And and they have in Afghanistan been trapped in the in in the country, and at profound risk from the Taliban. Their independent has understood. The National Director of Security NDS Afghanistan National Intelligence and Security Service was disbanded by the Taliban after they gained control of the capital Kabul in August. Agents of the NDS has worked closely with the UK and the US carrying out surveillance operations on the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Speak, speaking to the Independent in an interview, a woman who worked in a senior role at the agency has said she fears for her life and is currently on the run from the Taliban. The former agent, her name is withheld to protect her safety, which is absolutely understandable, said she fled to hide in villages outside Kabul after the Taliban seized control of the city in mid-August and has been too faithful to return to her home since. Members of the hardline Islamist group has come to look for her at her home six times since then, she added. The 60-year-old who worked for the NDS for 35 years said neighbors and security guards who work at her property informed her that the Taliban has come hunting for her three times in the summer, three times in the winter. Around 17 August, the Taliban came three times with police cars. There were around 20 to 25 members of the Taliban. The Taliban broke the door and came inside the house. The former agent who's currently moving between various friends' houses described her now abandoned home as a beautiful old property. She said she's too scared to even go, go back to grab some belongings in case her neighbors called the Taliban. She said, I quote, I don't like daytime because I'm hiding all the time. I am thinking somebody may give my address to the Taliban. I can't go for a walk. I've lost my freedom. I can't go for exercise. I'm scared by my shadow. I don't want to put the light on because I'm scared. I've put a lot of weight 
um, because I stay in my room all the time. I have a lot of health issues. I eat a lot because of stress. She explained that she suffered from asthma and arthritis by struggling to access her usual medication. She's too scared to visit the doctor in case it leads to the Taliban discovering her whereabouts. On top of this, she cannot see her daughter, her granddaughter. She fears for presence would put them at risk from the Taliban. The former agent noted that there were 6,800 women working for the NDS in Afghanistan prior to the Taliban obtaining power. She said that a minority may have managed to flee, but she believe thousands remain stranded in the country. These women are in hiding. They changed their phone numbers when the Taliban came to power, she said. A woman has two children who live in Australia and has applied to go to both countries but heard nothing from either. She's considering leaving Afghanistan to go to Iran or the UK but has yet to apply for citizenship for either country. If I stay in Afghanistan, I will die, she said. People here are scared. Women are scared before the Taliban came. I had a morning walk but now I, ha I had a good life i had exercise all my social life has collapsed she continued the world is not thinking about women who worked with the nds i worked for my country for the security of my country the taliban is a group of killers of inhuman people the taliban is a killer of freedom for women when i close my eyes i think about the taliban her comments came come after a troubling report by human rights watch one the taliban has executed ex-police and intelligence officers since taking control of the country. Heather Barr, Associate Director of Women's Rights on the prominent charity, said she was not aware of any organized effort to ev evacuate women who, are, who had worked for National Security Office Services, while some may have managed to flee Afghanistan. Thousands are still stranded there, she added. She said that she they have left completely hard. Right. Bar said not, be, not because they are working in roles that the Taliban thought unacceptable for women, but because they are against anyone who is seen as acting against the Taliban, includes anyone working for these agencies. It feels like a betrayal. The Taliban has clamped down on women rights since gaining power, barring women and girls from the workplace and secondary education, while Afghanistan is currently the grip of humanitarian crisis. While the Islamic group previously ruled the country from 96 to 2001, women were barred from working or leaving the house without a mere relative and girls were stopped from going to school. And before we talk about everything regarding this, let's just uh, go to the, the, the final article and we will come back onto this. So the Taliban has ordered shop owners, and this is absolutely even more ridiculous, but whatever Taliban does is not surprising, to be honest. So the Taliban are courtesy, courtesy of uh, Al Al Bia News website english.albri.net the taliban had ordered shop owners in western afghanistan to cut off the heads of the money queens insisting the human figures violate islamic law uh, i'm not sure what these guys are on but it's definitely when on the same thing the level of backwards and backwards of taliban terrorists is astonishing if mastery of our pe people for past 25 years was not enough taliban 2.0 are now beheading money queens because they offend islam now, I'm not sure how these are offending Islam because I've never heard of this before, but there you go. Whatever Taliban does is not surprising. I mean, they just make their own rules up as they go along. Since returning to power in Afghanistan, 
power in August. Pardon, the Taliban has increasingly imposed the harsh interpretation of Islamic law, like I said. So they keep it, they, it's their own interpretation of it. Severely curtailing freedoms, those of women and girls. If they just cover their head or hide their entire Makrina, the, the angel of Allah will not enter the shop or house and bless them, he added. The Taliban has so far issued no national policy or mannequins or statutes under the former military strict interpretation of Islamic law depiction of the human being are forbidden. What on earth? Since seizing power, they have banned girls from secondary schools, like I said, in several provinces, while women have largely been prevented from working in the public sector and excluded from government positions. Last week, authorities in Kabul said women seeking to travel long distances should not be offered road transport unless company by cross. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. The extremist group have increased rates on liquor sellers, branded of drug addicts, and abandoned music. Well, the UN Security Council last week adopted a US proposed resolution to help a humanitarian aid reach this desperate Afghan Afghans. So that, that's that's what that, that's that's what that's what I'm saying. Now, so what ex has exactly changed on the Taliban 2.0? We are, we want to bring uh, women, Afghanistan women who have either been in Afghanistan or, or who are representing Africa um, the Afghanistan women and all the experiences. We want to bring them on board on this show about Afghanistan women, the battle. So I will be trying to do that in the next few coming weeks. <clears throat> So we can, um, you know, bring them on board as well, so they can tell the, the story their way, exactly. And it will be like an interview because my interview, my when I talk to women artists, as you've seen, they're not an interview based. There's not scripted. There's nothing. Questions. They tell the story their way, how it is. Now, um, going back to Taliban, the story about them beheading those. Um, uh, Mark Wins, uh, or whatever you call them, uh, which they have in uh, display in clothes shops, it's absolutely ridiculous. And now, is not I'm not obviously speaking on behalf of Muslims here, and I'm not being a Muslim myself. But one thing for sure, and uh, knowing about the religion, the Taliban are just adding stuff themselves and you know interpreting it their own way um, and saying women can't do this women can't do that and, and and no religion says that one gender cannot do this one gender cannot do that the only time um people um uh, are forcing themselves and depict depicting and dictating which is a dictatorship is only when they want to just put their control over the other gender. And that's what they're trying to do. The Taliban did it when they first ruled. Uh, now they're doing it again. Basically, they want to do everything. They want to do it like a male-dominated uh, country. And they, want to, and they want to just keep on saying, this is Islamic law, this isn't. But no religion tells that women cannot do this or women cannot do that. A women can't educate, a women cannot work in media. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it's something which Taliban have made up themselves. And I'm not certainly not gonna say it, you know, any other way. Uh, it's something they've made up and uh, they did it before, they've done it again, and they haven't changed at all. And I don't care what they say, and and, and, and none of us do. Um, is something they're not going to change. Uh, though, obviously, we understand that humanity, it needs to be done for the Afghanistan people. It's, this is not for Taliban, it's for the people, and that needs to continue. US are doing it, India is doing it, 
uh, and loads of countries are helping out with humanity aid and uh, you know we are uh, thankful for those countries for helping the Afghanistan women the general people uh, all of them out um, and that needs to continue uh, because the Taliban they cannot run the country they don't have the finances they don't have anything um, so this needs to continue at least for now until there's a solution uh, going forward um, so Afghanistan women their battle episode 3 will happen next week next Sunday stay tuned for that women football new show coming up later on today as well as Hollywood actresses uh, episode 3 uh, cinema coming up as well so stay tuned for that enjoy your uh, Enjoy your Sunday. I know what I need me now. I need I need my drink. I need my cappuccino. What drink do you think I was gonna say? Come on, it's too early for that, is it? And I, I, I don't drink anyway. Yeah, I'm sure everybody knows this. Um, and get in touch with us if you want to be a live if you want to be a live guest if you want to promote your brand or you want to collaborate with us. Talent Spotlight three hundred nine. Like I say, Talent Spotlight three hundred nine at gmail dot com. And if you want to comment on the video, please click a comment and send us your comments. Click on the like. Our social media channels are as follows. get in touch and thank you very much for watching and i will be back on the the special hollywood actresses cinema episode three today as well as the uh, women's football show there's a lot of women football happening uh like i said hopefully we will, we will bring a special guest on uh, about um afghan women who knows about the situation um on board hopefully soon until we until then we will keep on talking about it and keep on addressing the situation because it needs to be addressed and one special is not going to do it so that's me from the woman agenda channel thank you for watching i will be back later today enjoy your day so whatever you're doing guys stay safe and keep keep everyone close to you safe as well